Hey to YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'm gonna be taking you guys through the prep work, masking and paint work on this new GT Mustang. It's painted in shadow black pearl, which is basically just a black pearl. It's got a lot of green in it actually, and you'll see that when we go to put the color on. Uh, it's about 30% green tinter. You can't really see it when it's fully covered and it's got this tiniest amount of blue pearl in there. I'm gonna be using Standox solvent based base coat for this job and I'm gonna be using some Standox crystal clear over the top of that so as always you can see I'm starting off by cleaning my panels down prior to prep work because I do always like to do all my prep work dry some people do still do their prep work wet but I've found these days most people are doing their prep work dry a uh, couple of the other guys that I work with do it slightly different to me but I think that my methods are just that little bit better maybe a little bit quicker and end up with a better job uh, some of the other guys don't actually clean their panels prior to starting their sanding and I think that that can lead to possibly clearing over bits of dirt. You also um, go through the bits of sandpaper a little bit quicker if you don't have a clean panel um, but what I was doing just there was taking a couple of photos with the spectro photo meter. I've then plugged it up to the computer and I'm finding the best variant so I couldn't actually find the color code so I ended up calling up the local Ford distributor and I found out that the color code for Shadow Black was C4 and it turns out that the initial initial reading that I took under Ford, searching for Ford, was actually the wrong colour, so I'm glad that I did uh, look for the right colour through Ford. Uh, I then typed in C4, Ford, and by refining that search, it did end up finding the right colour. These darker colours, uh, blacks and blues, can be a little bit hit and miss with the Standox Spectro Photometer, but um, apart from that, it's usually pretty good. It's a pretty good tool, but if used properly. It's just like any tool. If you don't use it properly, yeah, a recipe for disaster. So that's something that I do plan on going into a little bit more detail in some future videos. But for now, we'll just continue on with this job. And you may or may not have noticed on that boot lid there, I think they call it a deck lid in the US. So on the boot lid there, there was just a very slight uh, dent, so a very slight low spot. Um, I ended up just giving it a light scuff back without even breaking through, um, using a good fine filler here. It's a U-Pole Expert Fine Filler polyester glazing putty. It's actually quite similar to the uh, Worth uh, fine filler which I used to use. Getting that in nice and tight, I'm not putting too much hardener in. You put too much hardener in and it can actually bleed through the primers. And we're actually gonna be giving that a quick block down with some 180 grit, then 320, then 500, and then we'll get some UV primer onto it. I've actually done a specific UV primer review on this primer you'll see me using, and um, yeah, I do rate it quite highly, and it's absolutely perfect for stuff like this. Just a small area, and you're in a hurry to get it done. You don't want to wait for that two pack to dry down, or you don't want to have to get the heat lights out onto it. If the sun's shining, then the UV primer is going to work. So as you can see there, I'm just blocking that uh, filler down. Nice and fine, I had it feathered in nice, uh, so I didn't actually have to keep blocking and blocking, and I didn't actually end up uh, leaving it with a high spot. And as you can see, there's no cut-throughs of that uh, base coat. I haven't cut through to the base coat, so minim minimizing any risks of shrink back later down the track. Um, but yeah, that's another good thing about this UV primer is that you won't really get any shrink back with it. It literally dries hard as a rock within 10 minutes in the direct sunlight. Now, I'm using the Metalux UV primer, uh, UV cured primer it's called, and I've actually actually started using it in my minigun and I've actually found it a little bit better. Um, just a little bit more precise. I'm not overloading it. Now with this stuff you do have to be careful not to overload it. You put too much on it, it literally just won't dry. So you can see there I'm just putting a light coat on, still closed coat. I'm going to put it out into the sun for a couple of minutes, drag it back in, put another coat over it, put it out in the sun for another 15 or so minutes or whatever it takes. You know, if you've got 20 minutes, half an hour, it can't hurt to leave it out there a little bit longer. Most of the time I'll just put it out in the sun until I'm uh, finished on the next job. You know, say I'll go and prep the body of the car up. By the time that's done, I'll come back out here, grab the panel and... Uh, finish off the prep work. UV primers aren't by any means new on the market. It's just something that I've only really just started using recently. It's actually quite an expensive product. If we get one quart, which is I think 950 mils, and that's around $90. So it's not cheap, but it definitely has its place. You wouldn't go and start replacing all your, your sort of prime up jobs of a night with it. But for something like this, when you, you know, you're ready to go in the booth type thing, or you're prepping your car to go into the booth, and you just need to use a minimal amount of it on a small repair, well, then it's absolutely ideal, especially when we're using the solvent-based base coats, which can be prone to shrinking back. If you're using water-based, well, you may even just be able to get away with using a bit of uh, 1K primer or something like that, 
and then put some wet on wet non sanding primer over the top of it and that would be enough but yeah at this point I'm, I'm really enjoying using this uh, UV cured primer as you can see there I'm just putting it in the direct sunlight and within 10 minutes that would be absolutely fine to sand you, you do may have noticed that it's actually stays a little bit transparent but it's amazing the build that you get out of it like you can give that a really good block and you really surprised that you only put two coats on and you just don't block through very easy um, I'm actually yet to go and sand through my UV primer uh, back to the repair and then need to reprime it as you will sometimes with even three or four coats of your two-pack primers so you don't get as much evaporation out of it and it seems to fill quite well um, anyway back on to the body of the car while that panel's out there drying off and you can see I've just finished around uh, the cleaning up around the edges and I'm just going around uh, masking off uh, the panels that I don't want to hit uh, one person on my Instagram page said oh you didn't really leave yourself much room for a blend there but on a black color or a really dark color like this that's plenty of room for me to blend if it was a silver or a lighter color a metallic or something like that well then yep I'd probably want to go and uh, blend into that fender and the boss did even say hey if you want to blend that that fender you're absolutely welcome to but I just decided you know it doesn't need it it's just an uh, an extra panel to be painted on the car and it's not necessary so so next up I'm just giving it a good block down I'm uh, starting off with 180 grit just to make sure it's nice and uh, straight I get that repair nice and straight now there was really only a couple of little bits of damage on this car the whole quarter panel was just a blend panel um, just for the color uh, where the repair was on the boot lid and um, yeah most of it's just gonna be getting clear coated um, so you can see me just doing a bit of a wet check there now that's just some wax and grease remover or prepsol whatever you like to call it we just call it prepsol over here and it's just basically emulating the wet finish i then dried that back off gave it a bit more of a block because i wasn't quite happy with it so next up i've got the orbital sander with an interface pad on it and some 600 grit now it's a bit of a big jump between uh 180 grit and 600 but if you're careful and you're looking at the job properly and you're looking for those small scratches, then you should be able to remove the 180 grit scratches straight straight out with 600. Um, you could also possibly block your repairs down with 240, but I find that blocking them down with 180 grit just gets them that little bit straighter. It saves a little bit of elbow grease because it cuts down that little bit quicker as well. And um, because it was such a small area, that's why I did 600 straight over the top of it. If it was a larger area, I probably, probably would have gone blocked it with 180 and then 320 grit and then 600 uh, because yeah on a, on a large area it's just going to take forever to go straight from 180 to 600. Every job is different and they should be treated differently. Uh, slight variations to my prep methods will apply in different jobs. Sometimes I even just use a little bit of grey scotch bright instead of 800 grit like you're about to see me using here and in this instance I used both so I went over removed all orange peel in the hard to reach areas like you see me sanding here so I'm actually sanding uh, that paint back down dead flat which enables me to get a fresh start a clean start when I do go to put my paint over it but it turned out that this car here I think it's got like some sort of a ceramic clear on it and it was really hard to rub like especially all the edges I really just couldn't get rid of those last little shiny bits so I just ended up sanding most of it with the 800 grit and then just going around those last little shiny bits with the piece of grey scotch bright and then that was all good to paint over there may be a few things that you look at this workshop and you say oh it's a little bit old, on the older side but to me I absolutely love working here it's got everything I need to get some really good quality results done okay we don't have the prep bays with the um, you know dust extraction and the fans and all that stuff we may not have the ventilated uh, mixing room and all that stuff but we've got everything that I need to do good quality work and we get some absolutely killer cars coming in like this beast I do get a few people saying oh why don't you get your own shop again that's when you made the best videos or something like that but I'm actually happier working at this shop as an employee I make just about the same amount of money I have less stress and I feel a little bit more freer as well I can turn around to the boss and say you know what shove your job up your ass I'm leaving I'm going back to Thailand or whatever it be whereas when you're in your own workshop you sort of feel a little well you are a little bit trapped you're a slave to the man I guess you may think that oh you're, you're freer when you've got your own shop but you're not actually I think you're actually a bit more free when you are an employee when you've got your own place you've got bills coming in you've got customers
customers telling you they want their car back and they want it in showroom condition but they're only paying bottom dollar for their car uh, you've got leases that you're stuck into so you know if you've got a three-year lease that's the next three years of your life you're stuck there you know um, obviously you can break your lease but that costs you money and look I'm just happy you're here we've got good working hours good working conditions I've got everything I need I'm using good paint and I get to paint some really nice cars I'm uh, coming home of a night and getting fit as well and I'm just feeling uh, generally positive and happy about life so there you go we'll continue back on with your job you can obviously see that I've got all my prep work done now and I'm wiping it all down with some wax and grease remover and I'm starting to do my edge masking turns out that someone was in the booth so I was just waiting for him we've got two booths here that's another great thing so we really actually pump out quite a lot of work here I think we do around 200 150 to 200 cars a month uh, so that's about 50 cars a week. We've got three painters and one apprentice in the paint shop. And it's a generally uh, good crew. We all get along. We're all sort of joking around, but we still get the work done. You know, we're happy to have a laugh and a joke at work, but the work still gets done. The boss isn't uh, constantly down your throat and telling you what to do. If you do make a mistake, then it's never a big deal. I mean, it's not something that happens all the time, but we're all human. We all make mistakes. Sometimes you can just misjudge a color and you can get it outside and you're like, wow, something went wrong there but I thought it was okay and um, yeah it's never the massivest deal they'll just say hey well we're either going to blend it or just go again have give, have another shot with it but um, yeah we all work together as a team and yeah just get a nice amount of work done in a good environment so um, you can see me here just doing that edge masking I had someone say recently they haven't seen me do that false edge very often uh, lately but, and that's probably just because you haven't I haven't included that in a video sorry um, not that I don't do it every day because I do use that just about every day it would be a rare day that goes past uh, that I don't use that soft edge masking on my door jams um, so there you go I've got all the edge masking done and I've got it into the booth and we're ready to throw some plastic over it I'm using one of my awesome Colad masking blades absolutely love these things um, I was only thinking about it the other day when I was using one like I've had this one that's in my pocket it just stays in my pocket all day um, I've had this on the go for over a month and it's still quite sharp so um, I was thinking about what a box of razor blades is about $20 give or take um, and I probably would uh, say that it's cheaper to run these things I think they work out to about a dollar each or something like that um, depends where you get them from and all that but um, yeah they've got a little magnet on it too so you can sort of whack it up on the inside of your booth box if you don't want to keep it in your pocket but you also don't get um uh, sliced by it like if you leave a razor blade in your pocket i've done that before when i was an apprentice and come out uh yeah with my fingers all cut up because i had a razor blade in my pocket so um after that i never put razor blades in my pocket again so if you don't have one of these things then you, you can be running around looking for that razor blade that's not me trying to push products on you guys either don't take that the wrong way that's just my honest opinion i think most of my viewers do get that as well i haven't sold out and i'm definitely not going to sell out over a one dollar razor blade but yeah they are good and i do recommend uh, giving them a shot and do stick with them if you do try them i think i made a mention to them before when i first started using them but um yeah when i first used them i didn't like them because you're just used to using a razor blade so just stick with them like if you do give them a shot don't just say no nah, i don't like it i'm back to the razor blades after one day give it a couple of days and see what you think of it and you may just end up finding that they're quicker and yeah just Ha always having it in your pocket is actually really invaluable like it does save time I had a follower of mine make a good comment uh, probably a couple of months ago now when I did the tour of this workshop when I came back to this shop and um, I was making a mention to my trolley and how it saves time so that you're not constantly running around the workshop looking for things and he said that his dad was a cabinet maker or something like that and um, he's he what he said to him was son it's not what you do that makes you fast it's what you don't do that makes you fast so if you're constantly running around looking for shit and you don't know where it is well that's going to take so much time if you're organized and you keep things in their right place like in that booth box i've always got my things that i keep in that booth box so i'm not running up the other end of the workshop to find a rag when i need to wipe the panels down uh no i can stay straight in the booth and it's all it's all there i know where it is and uh yeah just a quick fast procedure so yeah it's not what you do that makes you fast it's what you don't do and this one here is a gunman original i've heard a lot of people say work smarter not harder my reply to that is no work smarter and harder you'll be the best there is i reckon whoever came up with that one must be a little bit lazy so my motto is work smarter 
harder and harder and paint some shit that's another motto of mine and on that note we're about ready to start painting some shit i've already wiped it down with the wax and grease remover and the dupont sontara wipes you may have noticed and i've got my new standox spray suit on it's pretty cool it's a one piece but i like how it's got the pockets in the front and it's also got uh, cutouts in the pockets uh, down the sides so I can actually access my standard pockets in my normal pants through uh, those cutouts so that's actually a very handy thing yeah it's just handy to be able to get into your razor blade or your phone or whatever you know you might be painting and you need to take a few photos for the Instagrammers or Facebookers or whatever and um, yeah it's easy to do that and also another thing that even one of my workmates said that when you're wearing the two-piece suits which I used to wear uh, sometimes you could just uh, get a little bit lazy and just say hey I'm just gonna wear the jacket and not wear the pants but uh, this way it just forces you to wear the full suit um, anyway as you can see I've wiped the entire job down with the tack cloth I did that like three or four times use the air blower as well I did obviously I have edited the entire video down if you were to see everything I did the video would have gone for a couple of hours probably a little bit more than that but um, yeah I've edited it right down and all the flash off times I've edited those out too but it really isn't taking long for this paint to dry in between coats it's probably around 30 32 degrees Celsius I don't know what that equates to in Fahrenheit but it's a warm day uh, it's our summer here at the moment while America and the northern hemisphere are in their winter we get our summer so I'm still loving this new Segola I've got I've got one for clear and one for base coat I did do a specific review on each one of these guns and I'm using the base coat gun here it's got the aqua air cap on it one thing I actually didn't mention in the uh, reviews because I hadn't actually done it yet is that you can clear with the aqua cap and you can base with the clear cap so I've, I've mixed them up since and they do work quite fine I personally wouldn't do it every day like it wouldn't be my preferred clear cap this aqua cap that I've got on here and the clear coat wouldn't be my preferred base coat cap but they but you can spray it fine without any issues there was one or two little um, chips there that I did find when I was prepping it up and a couple of little nicks around that door handle so I did decide to put just a tiny uh, amount of colour there and because it's black it's just covering so easy so it's only going to need like one and a half coats and good to clear. So I've decided I'm going to put some tunes on for the rest of this video. I've officially ran out of shit to say so I do thank you guys for watching and hope you do decide to hang around to the end. I'll be putting some key information in text layers up on the screen like gun settings and flash off times and materials I'm using as I have done for the rest of this video and I'll see you guys on the other side.
Thanks for hanging around to the end there, Gunners. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you've got any questions. I'll do my best to get back to any relevant questions. I can't answer everybody's because there is only one of me. And obviously, I do have a pretty busy life between painting lots of shit and making lots of videos. So make sure you go over and check out thegunman.net.au. That's my website. I'll be updating the store over there as new products come in. But I've got some shirts on the way, some stubby coolers, hats, and cool things on the way so be sure to keep an eye on that and check out the rest of my social media through the links in the description of this video down below now you've seen this video get out there and paint some shit thanks for watching and this has been another gunman production goodbye